Breathe in two and one. Hey, look at that picture. Hey, look at that one. And that one. Collider Jedi Castle starts right now. This really is turning into the Millennium Falcon of desks. <laughs> it's just, what it's <laughs> falling apart. It's a, it's a piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to Collider <laughs> Jedi Council. That's okay. <laughs> this studio smells like a dog took a big dump in it. You know why that is, Ken? A, a dog took a, a dump in the studio uh, yeah. earlier today, but it smells like a dump and uh, Febreze. So welcome back to <laughs> Collider <laughs> Council. Welcome back, everybody. It's nice to have you on this wonderful uh, Thursday. At least jo we have Emma to class it up. Yeah, that's right. We do have Emma to class it up. She is it's here. It's true. That's, uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, and I almost called you Emma Dias. Which <laughs> oh, makes no, fi it doesn't make any sense. It makes no you know, sense at all, fine. but Fife Dias yeah. does, and you're here once again. What are you drinking? What's uh, Kirkland? This, is uh, this is the uh, Costco generic oh, knockoff yeah. LaCroix. of LaCroix. Is it good? Uh, it's very good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, you can't afford that look. <laughs> exactly. I can't, I can't get that. that brand name stuff. Yeah. And oh, the thing yeah. about Kirkland brand stuff is that a lot of the time it is secretly luxury brands yeah. that yeah. have just been yeah. packaged under the Kirkland label. It's so who's fine. to say that this isn't actual LaCroix? LaCroix? Oh, yeah, I ain't shaming you. I'm joining you. Thank you that? very much. I, you seem like a Shasta man yourself. So. <laughs> I have had a lot of cream soda Shasta in my life, Emma Fife. Ken, when you're not stepping over little dog's poop, what are you doing? <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. Uh, I'm the author of the new book, Why We Love Star Wars, and nice. I'm your uh, co-conspirator here, and I think it's time to dump, uh, jump into some <laughs> dump. <laughs> to jump into <laughs> You did that on purpose. Yeah, I did it on purpose. No, I'm, I'm it just, just happened. I'm just, a, like, I'm just I'm walking dumb. back. I'm it's walking back with Darina, and I just see this little dog like poised in this position. <laughs> I'm like, the dog's taking a crap in the studio. I mean, it's doing no. nothing but crapping in the studio. Looks over. The <laughs> He's like, it's sick. It's sick and taking a crap in the studio. Oh, mm -hmm. it is. It's sick. Oh, it is. Taking a crap. Um, well, <laughs> anyway. we're not taking a crap. We're talking about, <laughs> about Star Wars, and we're going to lean right into Star Wars movie news. That's right. <laughs> All the crap that's going on with Star Wars, we're going to talk about it. And Ken, we had some big news happen. What do you we think? did you have some big news. It was kind of cool. We had uh, a little, uh, some uh, little birdies online. We're tweeting out some cool things uh, uh, on on uh, Tuesday, and then Wednesday we got the big Vanity Fair article. Uh, Annie Leibovitz does her great uh, photos that she always does, and that's tradition going back yeah. quite a ways. Yeah. I, uh, the Phantom Menace photos, I remember being big stuff. Big stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Here we go. We got a lot of these and a great article too. I, I you know, I, I, I can sometimes rail on about uh, not. It's not even about spoilers, Christian. I just sometimes yeah. don't want context. Like, I don't sure. even want the context. Right. I, I got to tell you, I, maybe it was my mood. I just was you like, liked all the context. I, I liked the context, yeah. and I just read everything. I thought JJ said some great things. I, he doesn't dress great, but hey, he's shooting yes. in 110 degrees <laughs> weather I, I on set. See, uh, That's okay. Uh, something saying that yeah. it was uh, just JJ dressed as your mediocre college boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. uh, while it's functional. This movie. It's yeah. functional. I'm teasing him. <laughs> yeah. I own cargo shorts for 20 years. Thank you, John Cena. I was but, looking at these pictures. Yes. And I said to myself, I was like, I gotta look and I gotta guess which one Ken likes the most. Okay. Okay. I know it. Okay. Easy. Richard E. Grant. Oh. There the, that one there. That's uh, it. As uh, what is it, Allegiant General? Yeah. Uh, General Pride. Pride. Am, I, am I close? Uh, I was actually gonna say it's this one and this wow. one. Wow. Oh. Uh, Surprise. But I do like. I do love it's Richard E. Grant. It's a new Imperial. Spice World represent. Yeah. And <laughs> we got ourselves a, 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 a very prim and proper bad guy officer. I, I am yeah. just fast. This photo to me, the one with General Pride and Hux, mm -hmm. it just, I'm so interested to see what the relationship between these two people oh, I think is. He's the, I think he's the new Tarkin. I think they're going sure. to get like a new Tarkin oh, out yeah. there. And they're going to show where, where's he been, what's he been commanding. Almost similar to what like Thrawn was doing in the... Um, in, in the Rebels? No, no, no. Oh, in, the, in, uh, in the original the novel. first Thrawn novel, yeah, yes. Yeah, in the original novels that came out all mm -hmm. those years ago, but mm -hmm. the non-canon ones yeah. um, by Zahn. Like, he just, after Re Return of the Jedi, he went off to his own separate missions, mm -hmm. and that's what he's been doing. He's been doing separate missions outside, not fighting the Resistance, but he's right. back there, and he's got to look. Now, now he's... If he's side by side with him, then that means he's got to probably have a beef with Kylo Ren because they they're, they're, they've they got a beef, yeah. too. Yeah. But a lot of these images, images were, were telling, and the Knights of Ren was my favorite. I mean, uh, come I, that on. was gonna a hundred percent be my guess. Yeah, of course. <laughs> they, they only, those are only behind the scenes, right? Yes. Right, right, those right, only right. behind the scenes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and the, if I don't know if we have those pictures anywhere 
close or or another there. Thank there you so are. much. Adam's like, look at the screen, you idiot. Um, <laughs> Adam's like, quit staring at the yeah, ceiling. He's like, he's like, I can't <laughs> physically the change the ones in the right, back. Exactly. You've been but here for five years and a dolphin table. Please go and, uh, and, and and check the screen in front of you. Thank I'm you sorry, Adam. I apologize. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, uh, um, that uh, Knights of Red, uh, that's some cool stuff there. You know, um, Adam's a big Santana fan, the band Santana. That's what I heard. Did you know that? Yeah. Oye, como, nope. Um, uh, but I, uh, yeah, that, that, that picture of the Knights of Red, which now it's, it's just us. Um, <laughs> I think I think Dominic Monaghan is behind JJ uh, in the back there with that big old axe. Yeah, that's that right. Is. Yeah, we haven't seen yeah. Dominic Monaghan. They haven't mentioned him. Yeah, they we know he's him. in it. We know he's definitely but, in it. Hmm. Unlike, I see yes. Matt Smith. Yeah, he's a, he, you know Matt Smith. <laughs> would, you know what Matt Smith would be if he's in this movie. What? A liar. That's true. <laughs> that's Dominic true. Monaghan not I saying lie. anything. Yeah, just not saying a word. Doesn't say he's in it. Or not in right. it. Just not saying a word. I like this shot. I like this shot. I think there over the years has been some confusion on me not liking the Knights around. I just didn't miss them in eight is what, what my thought was, right. but I like seeing it here. Right. And I love the cool designs. Uh, I mean, you're grab you, this they is do look this cool. is it, man. You're excited for those those. I am, and right? also very curious though, too, because inside of this article it says that at one point or another, uh, or or in that tr in the trailer that we saw for mm -hmm. the Rise of Skywalker, mm -hmm. Kylo Ren is fighting the Knights of Ren. Now the question yes. is, is he fighting them in a flashback? Is he fighting them in a kind of like a uh, winner is the superior type mm -hmm. of thing, or is it the end when he's redeeming? Or I, I you think for me, my prediction with Kylo Ren is that he's kind of going rogue in this film that he's just sort of like a man out on his own yeah. and he thinks that he is right and he is the supreme and he's just going to cut down everybody so he's fighting you think he's fighting the knights of ren see, i do think he's fighting the knights of ren and you might be right i just hope that's not the case because okay. i want to see him i want to see him fighting alongside with them sure. i like the fact that you know maybe at one point or another they had because the, the knights of ren very well could be can I was trying to figure this out. I can't remember. Is, is it the Last Jedi where they say that Kylo left with some students? Yes. It is, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. yeah so it's the Last Jedi. I mean, that, that's the perfect way to explain it. You know, that's, these these are the last ones. That, this mm -hmm. is who the Knights of Ren were. They were the they were the students. Oh, sure. And I absolutely am of the opinion that they are former students yeah. of Luke Skywalker who left with Kylo Ren, and at one point they were all together. Maybe this is a scene of him again, because I. I really don't think that there is a clear redemption story arc for Kylo Ren. Don't. I, I don't. I, I would kind of like him to be, I, I mean, it's it's a little along the lines of like the Vader redemption arc of him kind of realizing that I've made all these choices and done all of these terrible things and I, and I can't. I can't, can't go back, back. from yeah, that. That's, I, I, I wish I wish that was the case. Yeah. It just it don't, don't you think it's like they're telegraphing that he's going to turn to the to make the turn? I guess. It like, it's, like, it's almost like telegraphing. I just think point. it's more interesting storytelling if he does it. Couldn't agree more. You know? Couldn't agree more, but I just think I think there's no chance. I would I put it at 95% wow. that he that he makes a turn. Yeah. I, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with you. I I I I my I flip a coin almost every day, whether right. even even with what I want to happen with the character versus what I think they might do. I, I know, and some people, because we're recording this, is going to be released later. There was some confusion. The Vanity Fair argues, article said they're fighting him, and then they later maybe have corrected it. There's mm -hmm. Reddit threads about it. Oh, we understand. Okay. Uh, we understand all, all that uh, Vanity Fair will say is, "Yep, uh, they're they're definitely in the movie." Uh, sure. Anything else, maybe oopsie. Oh, okay. uh, I always saw what, that that in the teaser trailer he was fighting more look more with that one he's like kind of chokeslam more alien like well, those, wait a minute. Yeah. those aki aki that we're seeing now so oh, yeah. they're saying then that this might have been an oopsie spoiler might have been an oopsie uh, but I, I, it depends again i read it I, I don't mean to discount reddit at all no. sometimes uh reddit's the source of information other times you know um not so much uh, but the, if, if it's to be believed it the, it reads like oh no the, don't don't worry the, don't look behind the curtain we can confirm they're there right which I, I wouldn't hate you for thinking well, they they let it slip. I can see JJ going, why did you put that in there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not, that's the end of the movie. Don't put yeah. that in there. Because if that's the case, then hello, Redemption. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 potentially. But uh, that's that other great things there. What about we Carrie Russell? Oh, yeah. She man. is Alexa Bliss. Confirmed and not a liar. <laughs> she is Alexa Bliss. Zori Bliss. <laughs> She's confirmed and not a liar. Kind of. mm -hmm. yeah. uh, not a liar. Uh, seen in the thieves' quarter of the snow dusted world, Kajimi. Yes. Uh, we got a couple new planets, of course, here. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we were seeing with the Aki Aki and, and Ray and the TIE Fighter is now on the planet Pasana. 
Uh, so let, let's focus a little bit on Carrie Russell here sure. because uh, we, we heard her talking about how yeah. her outfit's really cool. She wasn't wrong. She wasn't wrong. Like Christian says, not a liar. Not a liar. Sorry. You know, this was probably my favorite <laughs> image to come out of the Vanity Fair shoot, mm -hmm. uh, just because she's so dang cool looking. Yeah. But the question is, is she going to be another Boba Fett, like a just looks cool to sell action figures, or is she going to have a little bit more of an interesting story? I think with her relationship with J.J. Abrams in the past, she'll have a, she'll have a good relationship. I would hope so, role. yes. Yeah, she'll have a good role. And I think so will Dominic Monaghan. That's why I think he's definitely one of the Knights of Ren. Um, but I think that, um, yeah, the, the, I like what she's doing. I think she'll probably wind up fighting with them yeah. as opposed to against. I don't think she's a Yeah, a I, think, I think she's a free agent I who's going to end up on the side of good. Right. No, one of the things that we did see, like you said, Ken, there were mention of like a bunch of new planets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one of those planets they named as far as that, de that desert planet, so that pretty much counts out whether Jakku or Tatooine is going to be back for the most mm -hmm. part, right? Yeah, you think they're going to be two desert planets? At least is what we got. Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, they're not shooting too far from where I believe they shot. Uh, for Jakku, right. but mm -hmm. uh, hey, you know, uh, it all looks the same. Uh, yeah, Pasana is uh, the name of that planet. That that uh, it's always, I love new planets. I love figuring in. Sometimes I do, you know, want to go to the old ones. I still, I still kind of hope this is part of the uh, leftover Death Star Endor. near uh, mm -hmm. Endor or the yeah. moon of Endor, and Chief Wicket's over yeah. there somewhere. Yeah. But uh, I like the idea of a new planet. It's something new to learn, new to explore. Well, I think it'd be interesting because. If the moon of Endor, if the if the stuff fell, if, the, if it didn't fall on the moon, but it uh, fell on actual Endor. Planet. On yeah, actual Endor. Yeah, because we haven't actually We've seen, never Endor. seen Endor before. Right, right. So right. that would be actually really interesting no. if they did that, if they're fighting on Endor. Like, yeah. that and would I be great. I feel like that's the right way to, to do it, of building off of something that we know exists. So we have that emotional attachment, right. but our expectations aren't to know exactly what we're going into. I do like that shot, though. That shot is gorgeous. It's so great. The rain, like, kinda, oh, it's and, a great one. And they say, so that it also got kind of a confirmation inside of this article that we were confused as far as when this was going to take place. Right. At one point, I think Iger or somebody said a year later, or Boyega said a year later, and then at, at, they were kind of vague about it at the panel, mm -hmm. but now it looks like it's confirmed that it is a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say that approximately a year type of situation there, and uh, that, that's kind of cool. I like that. I think we're waiting for, uh, you know, to, to, to get a little space between the stories yeah. uh, to, that f gives us potential for other books and comics and shows, too. Yeah. And it also gives us time to have, a, like, established relationships amongst the characters. And even though we didn't see it grow on screen, they can bring that history right. to the film. So, I mean, I, I think in the article, Oscar mm. Isaac talks a little bit about it, about how, you know, especially with Poe Dameron, for the most part, he's really kind of been a lone wolf in this operation. And now he's very much part of the group and they've spent some time together yeah. and they, you know, bring that kind of emotional baggage to this film, which is a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we, yeah, Ken. No, I think we should probably talk about the uh, picture with the, uh, John Boyega and Nomi Aki oh, as yes. Finn and this Jaina. Is Jaina uh, horseback. These are Orbacks. Uh, I like them. I like them. Uh, and uh, look at that bow and arrow in Star Wars. I, I like this. It's here's, amazing. Here's my hope with this scene because it is an incredible image. My hope with this scene is that I, they're obviously not going to do another Death Star. You, you just you just can't do that. No. But what? How cool would it be to get an epic ending like Return of the King? Yeah, I was going to say like End a game. Or Battle you know, Fields. yeah, any, <laughs> yeah. anything that we're or Braveheart, you know, yeah. where the where these battles between these two armies hit in this open field, and you see, you've never seen that in Star Wars before. I mean, mm -hmm. I, Attack of the Clones, kind of, it, but 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 not not that way, not those yeah. epic kind of. Yeah, how can be shot now? Yeah, yeah right, yeah. right, and or, or Game of Thrones, you know, with yeah. the, whether it's the Battle of Winterfell or the or the the Bastard Bowl, you know, mm -hmm. either one, like like mm -hmm. something like that for Star Wars, and that gets me kind of high hopes that that could happen because just imagine with all the blasters the creatures the uh maybe the lightsabers maybe some of the knights are yeah. there maybe there's some new jedi mm -hmm. that are coming in it, it's it's pretty exciting with the possibilities yeah i agree with you T to me that's what i absolutely hope that this scene is part of because when you elevate something to that level it demands i think that kind of epic scale yep. that an all-out like Space fantasy battle yeah. would bring. Yeah, it's true. Ken, what do you think? I, I I have to almost temper my expectations because <laughs> yeah. I do want something like that, and I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, there's been big battles in Star Wars before, obviously. Yeah, You're just riding um, to the store to get blue milk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. You know, just I'm going back to Kevin Smith talking about being on the set for nine and just you know just seeing something you know so big he'd never really seen it before. Right. Um, I have would, a question about good. that. Also, the yeah, other yeah. thing there too. Mm -hmm. 
it was hinted at, and she didn't really answer it at uh, Celebration. Jaina. That's not Jaina, right? Jana. 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 Yeah. Jana yeah. Not Jaina, still Jana. Yeah. <laughs> so is Jana Lando's daughter? What do we think? I don't know. Uh, I think if you're introducing a character this late in the game, there's a very good chance she is, because then we already have an emotional connection to her. Ken? I think that's a smart take, Emma, mm -hmm. and I I will say yes. I also think yes. With some like... Mm -hmm. Anyways, I think she's going to be the new love interest for Finn, and mm -hmm. I think that it, the dynamic between seeing Finn trying to court Lando's daughter would be incredible. Um, yeah. and, and then Rose is upset. Because, look, at the panel... Boyega very much played this Finn's a, Finn's a free agent. Free agent. Right, right. right. Um, well, Oscar Isaac very much yeah, played, played the, the, he uh, He's in play, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that storyline just for Rose and Finn, the, it was it was the most forced thing I've ever seen in Star Wars. Of just like, why? Love. this. It, it, I, just, it just didn't work. I even lo I loved Last Jedi, and I really like Rose Tico as a character, but I am in agreement with you on yeah, that. Yeah, that was just forced. Like, you know, but I think that Rose will be better off doing other stuff. Like, yeah. you, I want to see her. You don't have, just have to make her a love interest. Yeah, Let me she see doesn't what she, need to be a love interest right. or have a love right. interest. Let's she's see, interesting enough on I her own. I want to see what she's going to do on her yeah. own. And I think that that's what JJ, how he's going to utilize her. And I think that that's why uh, Jana and Finn will have their thing for sure. Uh, but Ken, mm. this picture behind you here. Luke yeah. Skywalker and R2-D2, right? Yeah, With Luke flame, Skywalker. Flames in the back. Now, initially, mm -hmm. a lot of people thought, oh, that's the, that's that flashback scene when, when Kylo burns everything mm -hmm. up. It's like, it certainly isn't because that's not the mm -hmm. Luke that was mm -hmm. in, in, those, in those days. Um, now... There, well, I, my, my personal opinion is that basically they pulled a, a Russo Brothers here thing. Remember in Civil War, they in the trailer when it came out, they mm -hmm. basically got rid of Spider-Man inside of the trailer so yep. you didn't know yes. it was him. I think they just removed the blue Force Ghost thing around him. Uh, I, th I think he's a Force Ghost. And R2's that, a ghost too? Nope, R2's <laughs> just with him though, but I think, that, I think that that is a Force Ghost thing. I think that's, a, that's after a battle. Because when we said he said, "I'll see you around, kid." I think he's gonna be, uh -huh. yeah, following around Kylo Ren, watching him do all his destruction, yes. and he's gonna be there doing that. That's my that's my opinion. Now the other thing is, and I just want to pose a little okay. bit of a controversial thing here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Did they, in fact, ever say inside of Last Jedi? I know that they said, "Luke's gone." Mm -hmm. I feel like he's gone. Did they ever use the word "dead"? I don't no. think so. No. Look. no. Look, I, I still think Stannis Baratheon's coming back. Uh, <laughs> and, and Game of Thrones is done. Uh, so, right. no, you can always play around with that. That's what, yeah. I, what I'm saying is, that, look, would it be would it be a, a, a bit of a cheat? And do we know for a fact that Ryan Johnson believes that he, he, Luke is dead? Sure. We do know that. But, but all I'm saying is, and mm -hmm. I still think, by the way, that he is dead and this is things. I'm just saying, though, if sure. he came back... Mm. And there was a thing that we don't know how powerful he was in the Force. And and some of the themes that they did in Rebels of mm -hmm. what certain Jedi are able to right. do and how powerful he was. Did he go somewhere? Was He, he, he could have gone into the world between worlds. Mm. He was into gone. Into a different timeline. So he yep. was gone. And you couldn't feel him. So when he came back, almost yeah. like uh, Gandalf. Yeah. Right when Gandalf, when Gandalf come comes back, back. I Gandalf I, the White. I wouldn't I hate uh, like a uh, uh, a Luke coming back as like a Gandalf the White kind of character. Sure. However, I will say that shitty Force Ghost Luke is what I want more than yeah. anything yeah. else. Just him bugging Kylo yeah. Ren. Yeah. So, but Ken, what do you what do you think about that potential theory? Uh, there's a lot there. Yeah, I know a lot of people been asking that because I, I that picture is definitely you know, if it's not altered, it, you know, what do we what do we learn from that picture? I don't know. I don't think they. Do a huge reveal, like, no, nah, he's back. They don't even he's talk good. about yeah, it. They don't even they don't talk about it yeah. in the article. Um, but all those ideas are in play. And if you, especially the Gandalf the White thing, you know, do I think Luke's dead? Yeah, I can accept that. But yeah, I mean, that works but for, this is also a fantasy series. Yeah. So it and can even, work. And even with a death thing, I mean, that's basically what happens to Gandalf in <laughs> Lord of the Rings. So mm -hmm. it's almost like Luke could have achieved a new level within the, the sort of mm -hmm. range of force Realm, powers yeah. that enables him to be a a more like active corporeal kind right, of Jedi right. until he's no longer needed. Yeah, it's the question. I mean, it's it would definitely be it, it would the thing is if they did that, um it, the fans are going to be like wait a minute, like right away. Like sure. the, yeah. the last Jedi fans will be like, "Wait, what?" 
what are you you're, you're reversing what Ryan did and, and, and other people would be like yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's yeah. gonna it'll cause a fight for sure and what? I think the easier the easier move is just making him a force ghost and then you just don't see it in this particular yeah even, even if they do the the Luke Skywalker uh, Gandalf the white thing I think I, I still wouldn't expect it to be huge you know what I mean like yeah. I mean a huge plot point but I wouldn't first act I'm back all right let's go for that I wouldn't no. think they would do that yeah. but if he's if he's back fully right sure. i mean he's talking to her in the trailer right oh yeah i, I think he yeah. could pop up the first scene but i'm just saying if he's actually back as a functional character uh, you, you'd I, have, I to would, that, you'd have to explain that you'd have to explain you really have to explain yeah. that and just like a year i mean a year later he pops back up on the scene i mean a lot of it's going to be mm -hmm. i mean they didn't mention him though they made a point i mean yeah. jj's like right, don't right, right. mention luke yeah that's you can see him on set just don't mention luke mm -hmm. yep. um but yep. i you know who knows? It's going to be definitely one of the bigger plot points. I still don't think he's going to be in the movie very much. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah, I agree. This is, that. Well, that, that's what I mean. I, yeah. I still think he wouldn't be in the right. movie. Right. Well, yeah. they talked about Ray inside of this article. And again, what we learned at Star Wars Celebration and in the trailer is that mm -hmm. she's um, she's pretty much reached her full potential. Almost. She's yes. almost there. She's almost there. And that's been a full year. And this is where I really think we're going to start to play because they, they also mentioned inside this article, which was very interesting, was the that we're going to finally see the end of the battle between the Jedi and the Sith. Yes. And the Sith have not been mentioned once, minus a mention of Darth Vader mm -hmm. or, or, or Sidious. Right. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the actual Sith themselves have not been mentioned inside of this new fact, trilogy. They, they went out of the way to say Snoke isn't. Right. Mm -hmm. So the question then is, um, the, well, it's not, I think it's more of a confirmation on the Palpatine side of things. This is the, this is the final ending between that, that particular battle. But I also think that it just plays in so much more to, because they also said in this article, combining and, and the things that have come in the past, yeah. other, like Plagueis led to cheating death, led to how to form life the hinting of Anakin being born because of the Force. And now, guess what? Now, only though I have this cloned hand of Luke, I also find ways to manipulate the Force again. Now, <laughs> greetings, young Anakin, young Luke, young <laughs> me. Like, you can, you can basically take all these things, clone them, and there's Rey. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I think it, I think it's very possible that that's that's kind of what that meant. Am I am I out of my mind? No, I don't. No, I don't think you're out of your mind, especially because I, I think that, and it's one of the things that JJ has said about this film, even before this Vanity Fair article, was that it was very much intended to bring a close to the Skywalker saga, right. and now beyond that, he's saying you know this this age old battle. So I I definitely don't think that that's out of line ken um i i was really intrigued by that sentence yeah and, and you know we know with the palpatine stuff yeah and obviously they don't mention it here too much and there's no pictures of sure. mm -hmm. great um yeah that's really intriguing to me because again it seemed like jj was absolutely no 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 snoke nope he just has a rope uh nope that's gold right. yeah that's good yeah but the, the sith being mentioned I, lo I love when luke mentioned sidious sidious in last jedi and and i love that kind of connection which again palpatine works for me on any level even yeah. just his name being mentioned works for me because right. it connects it back to the beginning now i really want ray to be like an like an avatar character from like avatar the last airbender where she can like call on the past powers and memories of the jedi masters that came before her that'd be dope well mm. that's the thing though is that if she is indeed a kind of uh, they, they she was formed from the force yeah and if she is a mixture of say anakin and luke and palpatine sure. all these things right if she, if mm. she is what can she tap into when she knows her full potential, right? right. And so, like mm -hmm. you're saying, be able to pull from the past and these things that that come from before. Like, how powerful is she? Is she is she the Neo of the Star Wars universe? Mm -hmm. right. You know, like, like what answers will we get? It's 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 uh, it's intriguing, intriguing, right. very intriguing, and definitely one photo I want to talk about. If you got it there, Adam, is the one with my man Lando Calrissian. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. get that one up. Oh. How you there doing, is. Chewbacca? Look at this shot. Look at Poe. Uh, Look at all that smolder from yeah, Poe. Yeah. Yep. I uh, love that he's in the Falcon. BB-8. That is a that is a Millennium Falcon that yeah. I want to be on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. Dio is there yes, all over Poe's shoulder. Dio. Uh, Chewie, uh, Jonas doing that, and then look, I I just we, we're all excited that Billy Dee's back in here. We know that, and I think uh, I think it's it's going to be worth it. But I love. Love that he's in his solo outfit. Yeah, I, love yeah, that. I, I, I do too. It's an homage to his solo outfit. It's yeah. actually kind of a mix between yeah, what he different. wore in, uh, you know, Empire, Empire Strikes Back yeah. and yeah. The, and, uh, and and what Donald Glover wore in Solo. It's it's a nice combo of the two. Mm -hmm. Billy D. Williams is eighty-two. You guys, yeah. he's eighty-two. Rocking it. 
I love that. That, <laughs> like, that shot. He's killing the game. Yeah, and I love that shot because Great it shot. also shows that there's going to be some, um, the, the fa that, that's like you said, that's a good crew to yeah. be on the Falcon, right? Yeah. And like the, the, to see Billy Dee Williams and Oscar Isaac together mm -hmm. shooting the crap, and then you've got Chewie there and the droids. Uh, that, that, it's, it's, kinda, it's gonna be a lot of fun. The question is, maybe we don't have her in there. Maybe Rose is on that ship. Oh, yeah. Because we mm -hmm. haven't, we yeah, haven't. Yeah, we didn't, she wasn't in any of these Rose wasn't images. in any of the shots no. yet, though, too. And JJ made it a point to say um, that one of the, one of the things that he loved, the, that he took with yeah. him from Last Jedi was, was her. He said, if I could, if I could thank Ryan Johnson for anything, it would be for casting yeah. her. her yeah. And so she's not going to be left out of it. It's just they just didn't have much of a spread on her, for sure. Yeah. But the stuff they did and we didn't talk about was the Leia stuff. Oh, yes. yes. Now, that, because you see that picture of John Williams and he's scoring. He's scoring. Yeah. Mm. Now, what I thought was really touching was how J.J. said he found, he realized they, they, they weren't going to recast her. They weren't going to do the Peter Tarkin thing. So he had to go back and look at old footage, and he went through that footage and um, wrote a scene, mm -hmm. or wrote many scenes yeah. to mm -hmm. make it work. And then he wrote Billy Lord, her daughter, into it, and they said, I can't do that, it's gonna be too painful. She said, no, I want in it. And then there's, she's like touching her. That, that's, gonna, that's gonna break people's hearts in mm -hmm. the theater, for sure. My, just reading it, and I was like, you, you could see it. So oh, yeah. You read about this, what'd you think? Yeah, I'm probably just going to burst into tears as soon as Leia's yeah. on screen. I'm tearing up right now. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I mean, I, what else, it, it's so, what else could you do? You you can't recast Carrie Fisher, and to do a CGI thing with her, it just it wouldn't feel right. And and I'm so glad that they found a way yeah. to work her into this story and to include her daughter. And because you know, I kind of thought, especially what's very exciting to me about the way that Last Jedi ended is that it was very much an open playground at that point. Everything had changed. Right. Uh, it felt like the end of Storm of Swords in the um, Song of Ice and Fire books. Uh, so I, uh, so there was a part of me that thought, well, it feels like they're setting Poe up to become the leader of the Resistance. And he had such a good character arc in Last Jedi. And then I was like, well, maybe it's going to be a time jump, which it is, but that they might like kill Leia off in the interim. And I'm just really glad that they're not. No, yeah, so. I don't think they're going to do that for sure. I think she's going to last. I think she'll I think last. She's gonna last. I think she'll too. last all the way yeah, through. And they're going to keep her, they're going to keep her spirits alive throughout the entire yeah. saga mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So that's uh, that's a lot to cover so yeah. far. There's a lot there. Yeah. And if you haven't read that article, it, it's, it's really, really good. Long it's long too. It's a big, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. read it on my phone and just yeah. kept scrolling, yeah. scrolling, scrolling. What's uh, what's next? Anything going on? Up next to movie to news. I mean, that's kind of that's, that's it. it. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, um, this uh, past week, uh, we had a 20 year anniversary of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, uh, a movie that was the entry point into Star Wars for many, many people. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott Mendelson had an article up on the Forbes in defense of a merely okay Star Wars movie. Um, like it, hate it. Whether you were seven, whether you were 22. <laughs> 40 when you watch this <laughs> um this movie brought opinions but it also did one big thing christian it really brought star wars back it did it for did. sure it did and it, it, well, i think you you nailed it where it's it, it opened it for a new generation definitely and, like there's a lot of people who this was their entryway into star wars the first time they ever saw it they were six years old the way with it, you know we were younger when we saw the original trilogy they saw these movies yourself probably included when uh, i'd seen all of the original trilogy before, you saw before i saw these okay. yeah because i uh my my parents had them all okay. on laserdisc uh to date how old i yeah. am and uh i i used to watch the original trilogy all the right, time right. uh and then when they re-released the original trilogy in theaters we went and saw those oh, which right. was leading up to the release of the prequels that's right it was about a year and a year before yeah. yeah but i have to tell you that when i saw phantom menace because what year did phantom menace come out 98 99 99, 99. 99. so it was 99. two years before yeah. right, when they did, they did the special editions in 97. yeah, yeah. so yeah. i was let's see 99 i was like 13 okay. when i saw um Phantom Menace in the movie theater. I loved it. Yeah. I loved Phantom Menace right. the first time I saw it. Right. I saw it th like probably four times in the theater. Right. And it, because it's it's interesting, like the perspective you have on something as a kid is, and it, it isn't to say that like, oh, it was pandering to children. But to me, it's like, I didn't care that Darth Maul didn't really do much. He was super cool looking at a double bladed lightsaber. And he was scared of you as a yeah, kid. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, and I think that it's grown. And the other thing, and I've made this point a billion times over, is that I think that. Because the origi original trilogy fans, um, 
when we thought this was the la that episode three was the last movie we were ever getting. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's all we get. That's it. But I think since then, and there's been so many more new additions to the family, if mm -hmm. you will, that it's all part of the family, and mm -hmm. it's all. And people have accepted it. I know Ken. I remember being on a show with Ken, uh, the, one of the first Schmo shows we ever did. And mm -hmm. it was just us kind of like just not liking the prequels. And then mm -hmm. it was you who came to me and said you were doing you were doing new shows. And I think Joseph Scrimshaw kind of brought out the, mm -hmm. the love in the prequels for you. Prequels for yeah. you. And then I started watching them more, and I appreciate them very much. I, they're very badly written movies, yeah. a lot of them. But, but they're but still. There's so much. They added some. They added some weird stuff to Star Wars for sure. But it's a space fantasy. Of course, it's weird. But right. they added a lot of really great stuff as well. Like getting into, you know, the, the sort of political structure of how things were within yeah. the republic i thought all that stuff was super interesting the introduction and, of course yeah and like without yeah. without the prequels we don't get the clone wars animated series right. which is some of my absolute favorite star definitely. wars content definitely it's all added up and i think the phantom menace did that and also added into some really great um no novel novels yeah. games so yeah it's good happy birthday to the phantom menace for sure so what's uh that's, that's it that's it for movie news all right we'll move on now because we're going to talk about Canon. That's right. What is the deal with Canon? Does anyone know the deal? Uh, with sure, I don't know the deal because there's, there's not a lot. No, there's not, not a lot. lot. Rogue so there's Squadron. No deal. The video game Rogue Squadron. Oh, yeah, uh, they got out in, uh, HD. Yeah. Got like an HD, HD uh, right. upgrade on this. There, did you read about this, Emma? What do you, what do you think about it? Uh, this is this is a game first released in 1998. 98. Wow. On PC yeah. and Nintendo 64. Try, I remember playing this a little on the N64 and, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly have some fond memories of it. I know a lot of people are big fans of this game. Yeah, yeah it looks good. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, Unreal Engine 4 is yeah. what they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just at this point, like all in on E3 and waiting for the EA showcase uh, right. where they'll have more footage When's of the, Fallen Order. E, when's E3? That? E3 is when? Uh, next second week? week of June. Yeah. June. yeah. So they're going to yeah. have some more uh -huh. gameplay for that. Yeah, game. they will. Yeah, I, uh, I, you're going? Uh, yeah, you're going? Yeah, I'll be okay, there. Cool, yep. cool, cool. All right. Um, uh, a couple of comics coming out. Yeah, a couple of comics coming out. Age of Rebellion, Jabba the Hutt, uh, number one, Star Wars Galaxy's oh, Edge, number two. Uh, if you're catching up with the comics yeah. there. Uh, I, yeah. uh, I, uh, I finished Master and Apprentice, and I have got the audio for the Dooku right. book. Mm. Haven't had a chance to dive in. I was hoping to do that on the yeah, plane Yeah, I haven't flight. listened to the Dooku yeah. thing yet, but Master and Apprentice is so good. Yeah, it really is. It, so when, when good. When I finally finished it up, there was... The stuff with Obi Wan, Qui Gon, and Dooku, and the prophecies oh, and everything. There's a, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, cool. But that's it. We can wrap up the show with some Twitter questions. Yeah. Let's do like uh, we'll do three Twitter questions. Let's do okay. it. Hashtag All Collider right. Jedi Count. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, you, oh, Craig Seals asked, asked about uh, uh, the Knights of Ren. Do we think they're Force wielders or just? Uh, I think some yes and some no. So a mix, yeah. little mix. Yeah, because the question is, how much are they going to take? If anything, from the Chuck Wendig stuff, right? Mm. Like, sure. Mm -hmm. Are the acolytes? That what they call right? The acolytes, Ken. Acolytes, for acolytes of Beyond or from Beyond? Yeah, whatever yeah, they yeah. are. Those. Uh, I mean, does that have anything to do with it? Is JJ going to ignore that completely? Um, or are we, if, because if they are just taken from Luke's school, mm -hmm. then yeah, they'll all be Force users, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would assume so. But I would think that Kylo Ren, in his time of breaking away from the Jedi Order and, and like going out on his own, that he might have attracted some other followers. So it might right. not just mm -hmm. all be Force users. Maybe not, users. but the question is who who can hang or be or deem with? Because the thing is, if you start That's making... True. I was going to say, maybe at one point they weren't all Force users, but the non-Force user ones might have been executed <laughs> That's what by I mean, like, yeah. Kylo Ren. Because, well, because if you have, <laughs> if, you, if you're Kylo Ren and you're bringing some of these people that you brought from your uncle's school, yeah. the mm -hmm. tough ones, right? Okay, you guys survived. You came with me. You didn't try to fight me you're a knight of rent you're a knight of rent you are too oh there's the, there's this schmuck that works at the deli he doesn't have any force powers though uh good luck hanging with us kid yeah then you're dead yeah you're dead you're dead you're dead um, you're done you're done you're done um great yeah cool that's yeah. it yeah no all right what's next more? yeah, two yeah. More. let's do it two more Mallory asked this question. Hi, Mallory. Hi, Mallory. Uh, family at Malfoy568. Oh. That's a, a Harry Potter um, character. That Emma. is a Harry yeah, Potter okay. character, yes. Um, <laughs> ask this question. Uh, if Ray Sloan took over the Empire and created the First Order, why hasn't she been seen in the movies? Uh, and I chose this question because, number one, I love the character Ray Sloan, mm -hmm. but I also want to tie it back to the guy over your shoulder there, uh, Spice oh. World himself there, Richard E. Grant. So... Uh, Christian, uh, do you think, because we know why the novels don't necessarily, you know, J.J. wasn't reading these novels and everything. Um, but do you think we'll get some kind of 
Whereas answer? With, no. They, from him? No. no. They, they, for some reason, the movies treat the books and everything else like a redhead, redhead stepchild. Yeah, well, so. it's... Uh, I hate that term. The best, I hate that term, The best, the way, I think, that we could hope for is a lot of what we saw that I thought that Rogue One did exceptionally well, which was bringing in Easter eggs. You know mm. what I mean? Where it's like there's uh, there's like her name on a wall or something, but right. they're not going to directly address it because they they very actively don't alienate anybody that doesn't read the comics or doesn't yeah. read the books or play but, canon video games yeah, or but whatever. Yeah, but that's the thing is too. Like, so I don't know if they. Uh, I hope that that's not how they feel that they're alienating because yeah. because you look at Saw Gerrera. I, Saw that's Gar true. Via Saw Gerrera, they said they they needed a like kind of a rogue. Asian, and then Pablo Hidalgo goes, yeah. well, we got somebody like that in Clone Wars. Yeah. And then they used him. Yeah. And it's like, but the thing is, if this is part of your lore, you would hope that J.J. Abrams like, well, what do you guys have in the story? Well, there's this woman who's just, he's not paying attention to anybody. I guarantee you, he's not paying attention to any of that sure. stuff. But I do think that's why we have a lot of hope when it comes to Mandalorian, mm. because... Oh, not, yeah. Because, not, and not just for Ray Sloan, just say for canon characters in general, because Favreau and Filoni, they're not ignoring... Mm -hmm. No, they are they are deep in the Star Wars lore. Yeah, they so they got their finger on the pulse of all of it. So I think that it's it's going to be a, a slim chance you hear anything about Ray Sloan in the in the in the movies at all in, in this movie at all. Yeah, sure. all right. yeah. Last yeah. One. No, I, I don't think you're wrong. It makes me sad, but we got this last yeah. one here from Big Sal. Yes. Big Sal asks, Hey, would you want a Clone Commandos TV series? Have it take place between Clone oh. Wars. Uh, focused on Gregor's time as captain as a clone commando and an animated series about the wolf pack Rex <laughs> Wolf Gregor set uh, before Rebels that would be great too yeah. uh, hey we got it still start with you oh. yeah start with Iger Iger says one more I hope it's Obi-Wan but I love this idea the troops on the ground I think mm -hmm. one thing the Clone Wars animated series <laughs> did is really deal with the the issues of uh, how people treat these clones uh, tools of war but they're actually got people uh, their personalities uh the whole chips the fives the whole thing with fives in that arc uh i love all that so yeah i'd be fully on board for like a limited series give me a good is he talking live brothers he, type he's of talking series. live action could be both i think you could do live think, action uh, but yeah. i think you animated will work i think you got a better, better shot at doing an animated one at all yeah. i don't even think that's gonna mm -hmm. happen because i think dave filoni's done with clone wars sure. and tying in rebels after this i think he's yeah. gonna focus on on live action, but the reason why I don't think it works as live action is very similar to what you were just talking about, Emma, and that's the alienation yeah. right now, because the thing is, for a television series, you have to try to, at least in the beginning, nab somebody with something in the films, right? True. And it's like, Cassian Andor comes from Rogue from One. From Rogue One, yeah. uh, Obi-Wan, if Obi-Wan's thing, obviously is Obi-Wan. And then The Mandalorian just ties back into Return of the Jedi and everything else that, that yeah. we've known and loved from before with mm -hmm. brand new characters. So there's something to be said, just depending on when you set it, that if you maybe made one of the arcs, sure. the clones could be cool. Totally, But, but just yeah. going off of the clones, um, it's 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 not yeah impossible. It's, it's like if there if it's true if there was a live action series that took place after right. revenge of the sith you mean yeah exactly yeah. totally I, yeah. I could definitely i mean very much in the way that the original clone wars animated series is basically serials so it's like these three episodes are a story and then these next two episodes are a completely different story happening in a different part that's of right. the galaxy all right well that's um, it everybody yeah. oh, sorry that's everybody that just no that's okay. that's uh yeah i'm i'm in agreement it's one of those things where yeah. i wouldn't I, I would i wouldn't mind seeing it but i'm also not necessarily clamoring for it i'm with you on that one all right guys mm -hmm. so thank you for joining us here on collider jedi council a lot of breakdown on those vanity fair articles what do you guys think what were the ones that stood out let's have a conversation in the comments section today of which were the ones that made you think a little bit you liked you didn't like let's have a conversation about it very curious to hear your thoughts if you haven't subscribed to us on apple podcasts please do that uh we'd love to uh if you if you're on the road you're at the gym it's a it's a good show to listen to at either one of those places comic-con are you going to be there if you're going to be there at comic-con saturday night on july 20th rachel the crusher cushing puts the inner geekdom championship on the line against either kevin the smasher smets or mike the killer kalinowski it's a saturday night it is comic-con tickets on sale at the schmodown live Dot com be there it is comic-con with the geekiest movie questions you could ever possibly imagine and you need to be there on saturday night so the schmodownlive.com thank you to emma fife emma where can they find you online i am all over the internet wherever emma fifes are sold at my name emma fife 
Ken, you'll be laughing with the rest of the crew in just a little bit. What are you doing right now? Uh, you know what? I'm uh, telling you to go check out my book, Why We Love Star Wars, available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, IndieBound, or your favorite bookstore. Just go ask for it. Go to KenNapsack.com for more information. Uh, a lot of fun with everyone out in Houston. Thanks for coming out to that live event and uh, more of those on the way. That's right. And like I said, July 20th is the next one. We're also doing live from studio June 22nd, the Collider Collision for big matches there so make sure you get on over there and you can also buy live streaming tickets over there but for me christian harloff at christian harloff find me on collider live on the collider live youtube channel or on apple podcasts and we will see you next time may the force be with you always